Digicel to create 250 new jobs if it secures a second mobile license. What the FNM thinks of government's plans to own 51% of the new cell company. What's happening with NIA legislation? Plus, the St. John's Giants paint the town green. We've got those stories and a whole lot more tonight. I'm Vonnie Toot and NB12 starts now. Topping news tonight, a mid-debate over government's plan to own 51% of the new cellular company. A top executive for Digicel insisted today the company sees that as an advantage. However, he says it will be highly challenging for Digicel to roll out services in the mandated six months. If successful, Digicel initially plans to create 250 new jobs and invest up to $250 million. So the rules of the game have been made very, very clear to everybody who's interested. Um, we don't see it as any, any bad issue at all. Though some people have questioned government's intention to be the majority shareholder in the company that receives the second cellular license, Digicel's head of business development, Frank O'Carroll, says that's not a problem. The operator who's chosen uh, will be given management control of the business, so they will be allowed to run the business themselves. Um, obviously the government will approve things like the investment size, any loans that the company have to make, etc. Uh, so we don't see it as a, as a stumbling block at all. We see it actually as an advantage the government will be involved in the business. Minister of State for Finance Michael Halkidis told NB12 on Wednesday government would own 51% of shares in the new company and would eventually offer those shares to Bahamian investors. Meantime, Prime Minister Perry Christie said there would be a 49-51 ownership allocation, conforming with the PLP philosophy that 51 percent would be owned by the Bahamian people. Though O'Carroll sees this move as an advantage to Digicel, what he does find challenging is the six months the successful bidder has to launch a percentage of its operations in the country's most populated islands. Um, we believe six months, while it's challenging, um, you know, we've prepared diligently for the last year and a half in terms of identifying where we would like to build cell sites, where we'd put our head office, where we'd put our retail stores, uh, the initial Bahamian management team that we would employ, etc. So with a lot of good preparation work done, um, the six-month time frame is realistic and it can be achieved. Digicel is going up against Cable Bahamas and Virgin Mobile for the second mobile license. If unsuccessful, O'Carroll says he seriously doubts the company would bid for the third license. We don't think so. I mean, we think the market, you know, it's a limited market in terms of population size. Um, in terms of the license commitment for coverage, it's a huge investment, you know, anywhere from 200 to 250 million right up front. So to go in as a third licensee in at least three years' time, uh, when the market is going to be heavily penetrated, um, it, we wouldn't see it as something that would be commercially viable for us. If successful, he says Digicel would hire 250 people. Initially, the vast majority will be Bahamian, so probably in the region of about 90%. Mm -hmm. And it's a model we've used in many, many other countries where we've rolled out networks. We bring in a sort of expert international team um, who identifies some local staff, in this case the Bahamian staff, and upskill them very, very quickly. Um, but again, one of the objectives government have let, made out very, very clearly is that within five years, the entire team has to be 100% Bahamian. And we fully support that and we believe it's actually possible to do it a little bit quicker. Meantime, the Free National Movement says government's plan to be the majority shareholder is a bad idea. The party's chairman said he believes there will be no transparency in the process, which he fears could make way for backdoor deals. Kyle Joaquin reports. Based on their track record with Blue Water, uh, they should certainly not um, set up a scenario where they are shareholders, major shareholders in two companies in, in the same market. That's FNM Chairman Michael Pintard saying he believes the government is only out to dominate the telecommunications industry and the Hamans should be concerned. Prime Minister Christie has already stated government's plans to be the majority shareholder of the company to be granted the second license. Virgin Mobile, Cable Bahamas and Digicel are the three companies in the running. Pintard says this statement should raise red flags for everyone seeing that the second company will be in direct competition with the current and only license holder, BTC. The difficulty 
with making that decision emerges on multiple levels. One, it does not assist the consumer in terms of creating fair competition in the market. It is conceivable that the government uh, that has a huge stake in the present telecommunication company and the government which will have a, a huge stake in uh, the majority sharehold, uh, they'll be the majority shareholder in the new company, can effectively fix price and disadvantage the Bahamian consumer. Christie previously stressed that he really just wants the majority of shares to be in the hands of the Bahamian people. However, Pintar today said if the government's plans comes through, it must ensure the deal is transparent. It opens the door for the possibility of any number of backdoor deals. And the government ought to uh, ensure that there's transparency in this entire process and should not in any way give the appearance uh, that it is seeking to, to dominate the telecommunications sector. Pintard said, quite frankly, he believes this will benefit only a selected group of people. Certainly there are enough uh, brilliant people, I think, associated with the government um, to help them understand the value of, of liberalizing the market, both to the consumer as well as uh, shareholders of companies, that, that, it, that it is a useful exercise. Um, so, so it's not because of a lack of understanding. I think there are other things that's motivating the Progressive Liberal Party uh, in terms of influencing them to choose this particular business model. Now, in addition to all this, Pintard said he believes the government already knows who they want to give that second license to. Prior to uh, our last time in government, the Progressive Liberal Party, uh, no less than the present Deputy Prime Minister, was involved in a deal and the public would remember Blue Water, um, a company that we knew nothing about, that it was very difficult, uh, if not impossible, to Google and find out what this company's track record was, who the board of directors were. Um, we were challenged in that area, yet this was a company that was in the process, in the final stages of uh, owning uh, BTC. Christie said the successful bidder could be named as early as May. Reporting for NB12, I'm Kyle Joaquin. The legislation to regulate the National Intelligence Agency has yet to be tabled. National Security Minister Dr. Bernard Nottage says the NIA is not operating illegally. Dana Smith tells us more. Questions have been raised by some about the actions of the agency. Legislation to govern the body was prepared last year but was never tabled. At the time, Nottage said the legislation would be tabled this year. The National Security Minister now says the legislation is still under review, but he maintains the agency is not doing anything unlawful. The agency is not illegal. It's a, it's a, it's a unit that the Ministry of National Security has set up to uh, help us get intelligence uh, information about crimes, about criminals, and to help us to be able to bring them to justice. I don't know what could possibly be illegal about that. Long Island MP Loretta Butler-Turner has called for the closure of the NIA, claiming government is using the agency to spy on the Bahamian people, a claim that Nottage has denied. She called on government to either bring forward legislation to govern the NIA as a matter of urgency or shut the agency down forthwith. According to the minister, the NIA seeks to prevent the emergence of any new threats to the Bahamas. Its purpose is to be the eyes and ears of the country, not only locally but beyond that, to regional and international capacities. He dismissed questions about the legality and activities of the NIA as political talk. They're not uh, interfering with citizens. They're not uh, arresting people or apprehending them or detaining them. They're simply seeking information, which... I wish every member of the community would, would take part in. So I think, I think that that is just a little political talk. Back in December, Nottage said he intended to table the proposed bill in the House of Assembly then, but Attorney General Allison Maynard Gibson wanted to review it. He said once she was done reviewing the bill, he would distribute it to MPs during the Christmas break and the bill would be tabled this year. When asked for an update, Nottage said the Attorney General is still reviewing the bill and it will be tabled soon. Legislation was prepared um, the, the, when the Attorney General's office... Uh, uh, had, had, when we thought it was completed, there were certain issues that they wanted to benchmark against intelligence agencies in, in other countries. And for that reason, it was delayed. Um, it is virtually completed and I expect it to be 
uh, table so shortly. Nottage has said government has worked on NIA legislation for two years. Reporting for NB12, I'm Dana Smith. A man was shot and killed on Farrington Road last night, pushing the country's murder count to 17 for the year. Police say the victim was shot in the head. According to police reports, officers were on patrol around 10 last night when they heard gunshots being fired in the Farrington Road area. They found the victim's body in a green Buick parked on Dudley Lane. He was pronounced dead at the scene. Investigations continue.